to find out what we have to find out the answer in percentage that is why arr formula is what beta arr is equal to average net profit after tax because the name suggests what accounting rate of return or average rate of return so everything we want in average so average net profit after tax divided by average investment into 100 this is the normal formula now see for calculating this first average net profit after tax you have studied earlier i explained you in last semester also that average net profit after tax is very simple average like a simple average like see if there are five years if there are five years first year profit 10000 second year profit 20000 third year profit 30000 fourth year again 10000 fifth year 50000 so how to find out average get the total of all divide by number of years number of years five right so this is the formula right this is the simple formula so average net profit after tax is equal to what bachcha total of profit total of profit after tax for number of years so see remember this this is what after tax ha huh? not before tax after tax so total of profit after tax for number of years what bachcha for number of years divided by number of years so it's a simple formula average net profit after tax now the main thing is what beta main thing where many students third mistakes that is average investments what bacha average investment so remember this average investment formula everyone have to remember it so average investment is equal to what what is the formula for calculating what bacha average investment now see the formula to calculate average investment is equal to what is given initial cost of investment what initial cost of investment minus salvage value salvage value everyone knows that scrap value so initial cost of investment minus salvage value divided by 2 divided by 2 normal for calculating average what we divided by 2 right so initial cost of investment minus salvage value that is scrap value divided by 2 okay so first calculated this right after that for getting this average investment what you have to add back what you have to add it additional net working capital whatever additional net working capital is there net working capital is there that you have to add back and your salvage value which you have deducted for getting average that is also added back so this is the normal formula but you have to remember it because many students occur mistake in this right clear so they write only these things forget to write this so if you forget to write this forget to add this your marks will be gone right so average investment simple what is average investment formula for average investment is what bachcha average investment is equal to initial cost of investment remember it what initial cost of investment right divided by divided by that is normal if you want to find out average that is divided by 2 but before that initial cost of investment minus scrap value that is salvage value divided by 2 right then what you have to do after calculating this add additional net working capital if it is given in the question then it will be added and plus salvage value right if you have deducted salvage value here after that after that you have to add it back so this is for average investment formula remember it right while solving practical sums these formulas are very important and these formula are more cleared when you solve the practicals also so review it this formula right because theory is also very important if they ask in they ask short notes in exams arr or non discounted techniques so you have to write all this okay so come on review it average investment formula is what average investment initial cost of investment say with me say with me okay initial cost of investment minus salvage value divided by 2 okay plus 
एडिशनल नेटवर्किंग कैपिटल प्लस सैलवेज वैल्यू ओके दिस इज द फॉर्मूला टू कैलकुलेट एवरेज इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट एंड एवरेज नेट प्रॉफिट टैक्स एवरी वन क्लियर हाँ एंड ए आर आर फॉर्मूला ए आर आर दिस इज द मेन फॉर्मूला राइट है सो ए आर आर इज इक्वल टू वोट बच्चा ए आर आर इज इक्वल टू एवरेज नेट प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स डिवाइडेड बाय एवरेज इन्वेस्टमेंट इंटू हंड्रेड इन टू हंड्रेड वाई बिकॉज वी हैव टू फाइंड द एंसर इन परसेंटेज ओके क्लियर सो कम ऑन हू विल गोइंग टू से ए आर आर का फॉर्मूला ए आर आर फॉर्मूला इफ एनी वन वॉन्ट टू स्पीक अबाउट द फॉर्मूला हु हैज रिवाइज इट राइट है दे कैन स्पीक बाय अनम्यूटिंग योर माइक यस ओके इन चैट बॉक्स आई एम सींग द एंसर ओके ओके इफ एनी वन वॉन्ट टू स्पीक Come on, you can speak. Don't worry. Don't afraid of me. Okay, simple. Yes, ARR is equal to ha uh, average net profit after tax divided by average investments in two hundred. Okay, and everybody say, come on, with me, with me. ARR, ARR is equal to what? Yes, average net profit after tax. Divided by average investment into hundred. Okay, average net profit after tax simple formula is there. Main average investment you have to remember it. So what is the formula to calculate average investment? Come on, say with me. Ha, huh. come on. Initial cost of investment. Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. Don't worry. Initial cost of investment minus salvage value. Salvage value is nothing but a scrap value. Divided by two, right? Eh? Divided by two. For getting the average, you have to divide it by two. Then add what? Additional networking capital plus salvage value. It's very simple, man. Very simple. All you have to revise it because in exam it is very important to solve it. And if you don't remember the formula, you cannot solve a single exam. Okay? So these formula are very important. Now. now the very important thing see see this calculation of cash inflow format pra forma of calculation of cash inflow ha ah, from next lecture everyone have to sit with the calculator because from next lecture practical will going to start so everyone have to sit with their calculator okay now Calculation of cash inflows. What, beta? Calculation of what, bacha? Cash inflows, and this is very important, ha? Huh? In this capital budgeting, right? This cash inflow are very important. Okay, so how to calculate cash inflows? For that, there are steps, and you have to follow all the steps. Then you will get your cash inflow, and this is very important. For payback period also, right? For payback period and in discounted techniques, in discounted techniques, cash inflow is very important, right? So let's see here. For calculation of cash inflow, first you have to start with the sales, whatever sales is given, right? Then after sales, what you have to do? You have to deduct all expenses, all expenses excluding depreciation. Excluding depreciation. Depreciation is also an expense, but depreciation. Remember it. This word, ah, huh? depreciation is a non-cash expense. What is depreciation? Depreciation is a non-cash expense. So while calculating cash inflow, depreciation is to be treated separately, shown separately, right? So yes, everyone knows that depreciation is an expense. but while calculating cash inflow depreciation is to be considered separately for the purpose of analysis right so sales less what all all expenses but excluding what but excluding depreciation right so sales minus these you will get your ebdt ebdt what is ebdt ebdt means earning before depreciation and tax why before depreciation because you haven't deducted depreciation you haven't deducted 
tax. That is why earning before depreciation and tax. It's simple, very simple, man and woman, right? So, see, earning before depreciation and tax, you will get, and it can be considered what your profit before depreciation and tax. Nothing to worry about that, right? So, earning before depreciation and tax. After that, step by step, see, first you have to deduct, then, then first you have to deduct depreciation. If you deducted depreciation, then you will get what? Earning before tax, which can be considered as profit before tax, right? After deducting depreciation, what you will get? You will get earning before tax or profit before tax. It's just a simple thing that you have to find out, right? So earning before tax or profit before tax. And after earning before tax means you have done this step, earning before tax, you got it. Profit before tax, you got it. Now, how? What now? Now, bacha, you have to deduct tax. Whatever tax percentage is given in the question, you have to follow that tax percentage and you have to deduct it from earning before tax. It's a simple fund. So tax rate will be given in the question. Normally, it is 30% or it may 35%, 40%, 45%, 50%, whatever. Whatever it can be. But if it is given, then only you have to deduct. Don't use your calculation that this will be the rate is on contemporary. No, don't use your estimated rate. If rate is given, then only you have to use it. That's it. So less tax after deducting tax, what you will get beta? Normal, earning after tax. Earning after tax, which is what? Profit after tax. Now the main, main game start here. Yes, earning after tax, we got it. Profit after tax, is, we got it. This is the normal thing that every business have to calculate earning after tax. For getting earning after tax, business has deducted all the expenses. Right? And depreciation also normal because depreciation is also an expenses. It has to be deducted. It must be deducted. But here, depreciation, we have to show it separately and it can, it has to be separately deducted. Okay? Yes, we have shown here. Now, bacha, for calculating cash inflow, the main point is what are cash inflow? Cash inflow. Now, for deducting, mute your mic, bacha. For deducting what? Cash. See. Performer of calculation of cash inflows. So cash inflow. After deducting depreciation, we got everything. Earning after tax, profit after tax, everything we got. Now for calculating cash inflow, what you have to do? You have to add back, add back, add back. Add back your depreciation. Oh my God. Sir, what are you saying? What are you saying? Previously, you have deducted. Now you are adding. Sir, are you mad? No, beta. I'm not mad. Right? So, bacha, you are going to calculate what? Cash inflow. What? You are going to calculate cash inflow. Here is what earning after tax. If you want to find out earning after tax, you have to deduct depreciation. That is common because depreciation is an expense. But I said earlier, Depreciation is a non-cash expense. Depreciation is a non-cash expense, right? So if you want to find out cash inflow, if you want to find out cash inflow, then you have to add back that depreciation because your cash has not gone out. Your cash has not been decreased, right? Depreciation is a non-cash expense. In depreciation, your Cash has not been increased. Your book profit decreases. Na? Your book profit decreases or your cash has not been decreased. Right? Your cash has not been decreased. Remember it. What I am saying in depreciation, your cash, your cash has not been decreased. Aapka cash kam nahi hota bachcha. In depreciation, your cash has not been decreased. That is why for finding cash inflow, you have to add it back that depreciation which you have deducted earlier. Right? Eh? 
that is why remember it for calculating cash inflow we have to add back the depreciation everyone have to remember it right clear ha huh. up to earning after tax it's normal that depreciation is a expense so it will be deducted but depreciation is what depreciation is a non cash expense non cash right so cash has not been what cash has not been decreased na cash has not gone out of the business in depreciation our cash is not decreased na bachcha that is why for calculating cash inflow you have to add back those depreciation which you have deducted early year that's it that's it so this is very important my dear students this cash inflow steps everyone have to remember it everyone each and every students of mine have to remember it this right so come on now review it revise it ek bar review karo come on review it what sales for calculating cash inflow sales then less expenses all expenses excluding depreciation then you will get what bachcha earning before depreciation and tax then what you have to do less depreciation then what you will get earning before tax or profit before tax then what you have to deduct you have to deduct taxes whatever will be the tax rate you have to deduct it then you will get what earning after tax or profit after tax the main thing for calculating cash inflow you have to add back that depreciation which you have deducted here right eh? clear okay so remember it remember it this ha huh. it will be added back only if it has been deducted ha huh? if it has not been if this depreciation has not been deducted so why you are adding that if it is deducted then it will be added otherwise no treatment okay right so remember it come on come on revise it with me say with me everyone have to revise it everyone have to review it right come on first yes sales then after sales say with me say with me yes sales then ha uh, all expenses excluding depreciation okay all the students say it right as say to your parents come on don't worry i can hear you sales all expenses excluding depreciation then what we will get earning before depreciation and tax very good then less depreciation yeah i can see the answer in chat box okay ha ah, earning before depreciation in ha ah, depreciation and tax then after that less depreciation very nice after that after deducting depreciation what we will get we will get earning before tax or profit before tax very good then we have to deduct what tax very nice very good very good come on come on yes tax after deducting tax what earning after tax yes or profit after tax good then ha huh. now for calculating for calculating what for calculating cash inflow finally we have to add back those depreciation which has been deducted earlier then we will get our cash inflow so this performa of calculating cash inflow are very important dear students you have to remember it you have to keep it in your mind right and do not get blind because i am behind don't worry okay review it right continue with your study do your best and take care also now the next one is what after that calculation of cash inflow that was what non discounted technique now the next point now the next point is discounted technique what beta discounted technique now see discounted technique is what right eh? so i told you earlier that discounted technique in discounted technique what we have to consider time value of money it consider discounted technique consider what beta time value of money right it consider pv factor present value factor to get the future money to the present value money right a present value factor 
right so pv factor is very important pv factor present value factor is very important right eh? to get the present value right eh? to get the present value so we have studied this earlier and all the what all the methods under this so first method is what discounted payback period right you have studied in non discounted technique payback period okay so same formula will be applied here payback period formula will be same here only the difference is what discounted word means while calculating here we have to calculate pv factor we have to do the pv factor we have to find out the pv factor and with that pv factor we can find out our present value what we can find out our present value so in discounted payback period only the difference is what you have to calculate your answer with the pv factor that's it you have to find out your present value and everything will be the same same formula formula will be same formula will be what bachcha same right as it was in as it was in payback period payback period jo bataya hai which i have explained you earlier so see same formula what yeah, what i have written same formula will be used as in the case of payback period right eh? the only additional thing is that discounted payback period we have to consider we have to consider discounted payback period okay what we have to consider discounted payback period right eh? for this present value factor will be considered right so see present value factor to calculate pv so this is very important mute your mic who is this right so this is what present value factor to calculate what beta present value of money which tells us about the time value of money so formula will be totally same which we have studied of payback period same formula only the thing is what present value factor so on monday on monday i'll solve the sums so i'll explain you all about this gudiya mute your mic beta gudiya gudiya saying mute your mic sir priya bullar priya bullar priya bullar mute your mic no please rename her roll number is not there otherwise you know ओके सर प्रिया राइट योर रोल नंबर बेटा हाँ सो सी दिस इज व्हाट डिस्काउंटेड पे बैक पीरियड मेथड नाउ ओनली द थिंग इज व्हाट बेटा हियर पीवी फैक्टर इज कंसिडर्ड एंड ऑल द थिंग्स विल बी सेम नाउ बच्चा द सेकंड व्हिच आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन लास्ट लेक्चर दैट एंड पीवी नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू नाउ हियर वी हैव टू सी द फॉर्मूला right so npv so npv is what net present value what beta net present value so what is the formula of net present value net present value here we all are seeing formulas and in last lecture we have seen the theory so net present value is equal to what what is the formula to calculate net present value present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow so beta see discounted technique in this technique the very important thing is what pv factor present value factor and the formula of calculating npv that is net present value present value of cash inflow what is the present value of cash inflow for getting this present value of cash inflow you have to use pv factor what you have to use pv factor with the pv factor you can calculate your present value right so present value of cash inflow will be calculated right review this formula in practical you will all get clear right in next lecture practical sit with the calculator everyone have to sit with the calculator so present value of cash inflow minus what investment you have done right so present value of cash outflow that is your original investment right so simple formula of npv is what net present value and net present value is very important for taking managerial decision remember this what bachcha net present value is very important for what taking 
managerial decision. So remember this. Net present value formula is what? Present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Present value of cash inflow means what? Returns you have generated year by year. Right? Eh? So you have to calculate their present value and present value of cash outflow means what? Present value of cash outflow means original investments which you have done, which you have invested initially, right? So remember it, everyone. NPV formula. Come on, say with me. Come on, come on, come on. What? Present value of cash inflow. Yes, say, say. Come on. Present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Okay. So this is simple. Now see, if NPV is positive. What, bacha? If NPV is positive, if NPV is positive, then accept the project. Now, how? See, if present value of cash inflow is what? 10 lakhs. What? Present value of cash inflow is 10 lakhs and your investment is 8 lakhs. So, 10 lakh minus 8 lakh, 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs will be your NPV, which is positive. So, you have to accept the project. So, this is very important. That if your NPV is positive, you have to accept the project. And if your NPV is negative, then you have to reject it. Like if your present value of cash inflow is 10 lakhs and your investment is 12 lakhs. Oh my God. So your NPV is negative because your outflow is more and your return that is inflow is less. So you don't have to accept that project. You don't have to invest in those projects in future. Right? That is why we are making the plans. That is why we are doing the financial management. Right? So this is what NPV and next after NPV, the next formula is profitability index or benefit cost ratio. Remember it. Profitability index or it is also known as benefit cost ratio. So simple formula. Profitability index. Profitability index formula is simple. In NPV is what? Present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Na? Here we have to find out the ratio. That is profitability index is equal to present value of cash inflow divided by present value of cash out. That's it. NPV you have to deduct it. In PI, present in profitability index, you have to divide it. That's it. Simple formula. What present value of cash inflow divided by present value of cash outflow. Simple. Right? Eh? So same here. If PI, profitability index is greater than 1. Like present value of cash inflow is 10 lakhs. And outflow is 8 lakhs. So if you will divide, right, it will be greater than 1. So if PI is greater than 1, then accept the project. But if PI, that is profitability index, is less than 1, then you have to reject the project. Like see, if present value of cash inflow 10 lakhs and outflow is 12 lakhs. So answer will be 0 point like that. So less than 1. So if it is less than 1, then you have to reject the project. But cha, right? So these all are the formula, clear, <coughs> sorry. So NPV is what? Present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Profitability index is what? PI, present value of C. Present value of cash inflow divided by present value of what? Cash outflow, right? Eh? NPV, we have to deduct it and PI, we have to divide it. That's it. Now the last one is what? Last formula that is IRR, right? Before studying the formula of this, first see, IRR can also be referred as, IRR is also known as all the alternative name you have to remember it, huh? yield on investment, marginal efficiency of capital, marginal productivity of capital, rate of return on investment and time adjusted rate of return. So this is what IRR, internal rate of return. Internal rate of return, alternative name, remember it, what? Yield on investment, marginal efficiency of capital, marginal productivity of capital, rate of return on investments, as per financial management, right? And time adjusted rate of return. This is the alternate name. Means whatever examiner can ask, whatever it will be, whatever name they can give it. Now, actually, what is IRR? Internal rate of return. So, beta, the rate of return, the rate of return which a project is likely to generate. What? The rate of return which a project is likely to generate. 
means you are investing in the project right so your cost must be covered your cost should be covered normally it is the normal thinking then everyone have to cover their cost right so for covering that cost whatever return you will you will generate for covering that cost whatever return whatever minimum return you will going to generate that is nothing but your irr internal rate of return right so it covers your cost it covers your cost totally right so the rate of return remember it say with me what is irr the rate of return which a project is likely to generate means that much return must be generated because if those returns are not generated our cost will not be covered so likely to generate those return means minimum return must be generated right right so the rate of return which a project is likely to generate likely to generate okay that is what called as irr come on say say with me what is irr the rate of return yes say which a project is yes likely to generate the rate of return which a project is likely to generate is called as irr clear bachcha come on again the rate of return which a project is likely to generate is called irr okay now i told you that at this point of irr cash outflow cash outflow of the investment is covered totally means our cost will be covered totally right for covering that cost for covering that cost whatever return we will generate that is your irr minimum return must be generated minimum must be generated right right so remember it the return what the rate of return which a project is likely to generate is called irr and you have to remember all the alternative names what are the alternative names yield on investment irr is also known as yield on investment yes say say marginal efficiency of capital marginal productivity of capital rate of return on investments and time adjusted rate of return so this is what bachas irr now the main thing is what formula formula to calculate irr right so the formula to calculate irr is this clear ha huh. now everyone can put their assistant attendance in the chat box come on fast put your attendance and also listen here okay fast now formula to calculate irr is what what is the formula to calculate irr irr is equal to c d1 plus pv d1 minus pvc i'll explain you what are these now pv d1 minus pvc divided by pv d1 minus pv d2 into into d2 minus d1 so where this d1 is what this d1 is lower discounting rate of return what is this d1 d1 is what lower discounting rate d2 is what higher discounting rate d1 lower discounting rate and d2 higher discounting rate both the rate will be given in the question don't worry right there like d1 is 10% so d2 will be given as 12% means more than 10% it will be 11 12 13 14 15 whatever so d1 d2 then this what is pv d1 pv d1 is what present value of cash inflows at d1 what whatever present value of cash inflow cash inflow present value at d1 d1 means lower discounting rate at lower discounting rate what is the present value of cash inflow that you have to write here and then this pvc everyone knows present value of cash outflow theek hai now pvd2 means present value of same present value of cash inflow at higher discounting rate at <coughs> sorry beta at higher discounting rate pvd1 is what present value of cash inflow at d1 pvd2 is what present value of cash inflow at d2 
D2 means higher discounting rate. And PVC, present value of cash outflow, means your initial investment is what? Right? So this formula is very important for calculating IRR. And all the explanation means D1, D2 is given here. What is? Right? So if you solve the sums, you can easily what? Easily get the picture of this. Don't worry about that. Right? So if <coughs> see here, one conclusion. If IRR is greater than cost of capital, means your cost has been covered. And then above that, if your IRR is greater, then normal si baat hai. At that time, it is normal that you have to accept the project. And if IRR is less, if IRR is less, then you have to reject the project. So, bacha, these all are the formulas which you have to revise it today. Correct? Hai? From next lecture, we will going to solve the sum. Okay? So revise it, keep it in your mind. I'll send all the.